Alright guys, today we're going to take a look at uh, graphing inverse functions and some properties of inverse functions. So, there's a rule that says if f of x, so if the original function has a point, uh, in this case a, b, then the inverse function, f of x to the negative 1 power, has to have the point uh, b, comma a. So it's kind of flipping itself because it's the inverse. And we'll take a look at what that means. Uh, so I have two functions here f of x equals x plus 4, and inverse f of x equals x minus 4. These are inverses. We don't have to prove it. They just are, okay? So, if I was asked to graph uh, f of x equals x plus 4 on a coordinate plane, and... I didn't know how to graph a line, uh, which, I mean, hopefully you do, but if you didn't, um, you could use a table. You could plug in points for x and get points for y and plot the points on the graph, connect them with a the line, call it a day. So, let's try that. f of x equals x plus 4. If I had to graph this and I didn't know how to graph a line using any other way, I would make a table. I would have an X column, I would have a Y column, and I'd have a column for the points that I will eventually create. Okay? So what you would do is you would choose values for X to plug in. Um, I, nine times out of 10, will always choose the same three values, negative one, zero, and one, just because they're small numbers. They're not gonna mess with anything too crazily. Um, they're going to be easy to plot, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values, I'm going to plug them in here for x, and then I'm going to pop out a y value. So my y values, um, after I plug in, uh, after I plug in my x values, I have negative one plus four. That's going to be three. Zero plus four is four. One plus four is five. So these are my coordinate points. Uh, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, and 1, 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these on my graph. I'm going to put these guys in red so we know that it's the first function. It's f of x equals x plus 4, okay? So I have negative 1, 3, my first point. Uh, 0, 4, second point, and 1, positive 5, third point. So I have my three points plotted, and to finish this off, I'm just going to connect my dots with a straight line and arrows on either side, and this would be the graph of f of x, okay? So now, if I had to graph... The inverse function, which is f of x to the negative 1 power, equals x minus 4. I could go through the process of creating a table and plugging in numbers and seeing what I get. Or I could look at that rule up at the top of the screen that says if f of x has the point a, b, then f of x to the negative 1 must have the point b, a. Right? So... It, what it means is we can take these points that are highlighted in red for our inverse function and we can flip them to get the points for our inverse function. So, um, just to show you what I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that rule. So if the point AB is an f of x, so if the point negative 1, 3 is an f of x, that means the point 3, negative 1 is in inverse f of x. So the point 3, comma, negative 1 has to be here. And if the point 0, 4 is an f of x, then the point 4, 0 has to be in inverse. So 4, comma, 0. And same thing here, this would be 5, this would be 1, the point is 5, comma 1. So, if you look at the coordinates, they are flipped. That's the rule for inverses, that's what happens. 
the x and y values are mirrors or reflections of each other. So I'm going to plot these in green. Okay, I have uh, three, so one, two, three, negative one, four, zero, five, one. And I'm going to connect my points with a straight line. And if you notice, let me label this really quick. These guys mirror each other. That's weird, because their coordinates mirror each other, right? Uh, what's happening is they're mirroring each other across the line y equals x, which is this dotted line that I'm currently drawing that goes diagonally through the origin or through the center, okay? So this is the line y equals x. Every single function and inverse will reflect each other or mirror each other across this line. So that's just something to note. So let's take a look at the next example. It says find the inverse of f of x equals 3x plus 4. Graph the function and its inverse on the same coordinate plane. Okay, first things first. We're going to find the inverse. Okay, our function currently is f of x equals 3x plus 4. Four to find the inverse. I change f of x to y. I switch my x and y values. Then I get y by itself. First by subtracting 4 from both sides. And I have x minus 4 equals 3y. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I have y equals x minus 4 over 3. So my inverse function, um, if I wanted to rewrite this as y equals 1 third x minus 4 over 3, that's also, that's more precise, I guess. So my inverse function is f of x to the negative 1 power equals 1 over 3 x minus 4 over 3. Now what we're going to do is since I have my original function and my inverse function, I need to graph both. Now if you're freaking out, like how the heck am I supposed to graph that? It has all those fractions. Um, I don't know how to graph that. Guys, it's okay. Remember the first example. All we're going to do is find the coordinate points for our original function, 3x plus 4, which is super simple. Then we're going to flip them, and those are going to be our points for our inverse function. All right, let's take a look. So I'm gonna graph my original function, uh, which is f of x equals three x plus four. I'm gonna set up a little table And I'm going to choose some values for x here. Again, I use I usually pick the simplest numbers, so I usually go with negative 1, 0, and 1. That's just me. You might have a different way. It's all good. So if I plug in negative 1, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4 <coughs> is 4. <coughs> 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 is 7. So my coordinate points are going to be negative 1, 1, 0, 4, and 7, 1. 1, 7. Okay. And I'm going to plot these in, eh, let's go with blue. So I have negative 1, positive 1. I have 0, 4. And I have 1, 7. Let's try and squeak 7 on there. OK. So this is going to be my graph, as best I can, <laughs> of f of x. 
Okay, now the graph, why does it look so terrible? The graph of my inverse function, my inverse is already in green, so I'm going to keep it in green, so we're going to graph f of x to the negative 1 power. Okay, so for this, guys, like I said, don't freak out. It's not that bad. All you're going to do is you're going to take your little table, and you're just going to flip it. You're going to flip everything. Okay. So that means my x values are going to become 1, 4, and 7. My y values are going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. And my coordinates are going to be flipped as well. I have 1, negative 1, 4, 0, and 7, 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those. Uh, these will be in green. Green, green, green. All right. Uh, negative, or no, positive 1, which is here. Negative 1. There's my point. 4, 0. And 7, positive 1. It's up there. And this is the graph you always want to label. That's the graph of the inverse. And if you notice, crazily enough, these guys mirror each other along the line y equals x which they're supposed to. So good, we got those graphed. Let's take a look at one more um, problem. It's gonna involve a little uh, more difficult graph, I guess. Not really too bad. It is a quadratic. Um, we've graphed quadratics in the past. It's not gonna be that bad, guys. Take a breath. I promise you'll be fine. First thing we're gonna do is find the inverse. So the inverse is f of x, oh, the original function is f of x equals x squared plus 2. To find the inverse, I'm going to change this to y. I'm going to switch my x and y values. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And then I'm going to get rid of that exponent by taking the square root of both sides. So that leaves me with y equals the square root of x minus 2. And this is going to be my inverse. Alright, great, we did that. Now, what I'm going to do is graph my first function. f of x equals x squared plus 2. Let me get my little table going. And I'm going to pick three numbers. What do you think I'm going to pick? Negative 1, 0, and 1. If you guess that, great job. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug these in. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Uh, plus 2 is 3. 0 squared is 0. Plus 2 is 2. 1 squared is 1. Plus 2 is 3. So these are going to be my coordinates. And I'm going to plot these guys in blue. All right, in blue, negative uh, 1, 3, so negative 1, positive 3, 0, 2, and 1, positive 3. Remember, if you see something 
uh, with an exponent of 2, it's going to have that U shape, that parabola shape, whether it faces up or down. Um, it's going to have a U shape. So this is the graph of f of x. Now the graph of our inverse Remember guys, we don't have to plug stuff in and check and all that. All we're doing is flipping our points. So x, y, and x comma y. I have my y values as or sorry, pardon me, my x values as 3, 2, 3. My y values are negative 1, 0, and 1. And my coordinate points are 3, negative 1, 2, 0, and 3, positive 1. These are going to get graphed in green. So I have 3, negative 1, so 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1 on the y, boom, we're there. 2, 0 is here, and 3, uh, positive 1 is here. So if you look at this, your inverse is not actually a function. Uh, why is it not a function? Because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Those red lines hit that green graph in two different spots each time I pass them through. So it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but it's okay. I was asked to graph the inverse and the original, so I did that. Okay, just because it's not a function doesn't mean you can't do it. You can still graph it, like we literally just did. Uh, so these inverses do reflect across the line y equals x. And there we go. All right, that is how you uh, graph and find coordinates for inverses.